All right, it is uh, 6.33, and I'll call to order the special meeting of the Boyd City Council. Can I have a roll call? Roll call shows all councillors except Councillor Kincaid present. Thank you. Um, if it would be acceptable to the rest of the council, uh, we could move item 5 to the top of the agenda since we have representatives from the Ho-Chunk Nation who've come to join us for the meeting. Is that all right with everyone? Yes. Uh, great. Uh, well, with that, item 5. A resolution approving a First Amendment to the Intergovernmental Agreement between the City of Beloit, the County of Rock, and the Ho-Chunk Nation. And uh, City Manager Arft. Yes, I'm going to do the presentation on this one. Uh, it's hard to believe it was actually three full years ago already when we finished the IGA with the Ho-Chunk Nation. It was approved at that time unanimously by Council and nearly unanimously by the County Board. And that three years has gone by. Uh, as so often has happened in the past with casino related agreements, uh, we need an extension. Uh, and has still not received uh, the final approvals that they hope for on their project. Uh, hopefully that will happen within the next year. Uh, we have a very distinguished delegation from the nation here this evening. Councilors have any questions or Chairman Green Deer, if you'd like to make a comment or two, please feel free to come up. Um, uh, other than that, what we're, what we're proposing tonight is a simple extension for three more years. Uh, that should be more than adequate time to finish uh, uh, the application review. It, it is complete. It has been submitted. It has been sent back to Region for final processing. And uh, hopefully, again, uh, I won't say a time, but hopefully sometime in the not too distant future we'll get uh, the final answer and then we'll go from there. So uh, with that, uh, that's really all there is to it. It's a simple one-page document. Makes no substantive changes whatsoever to the IGA. Uh, merely extends it for an additional three-year period of time. All right. President Green Deer, did you want to make any comments to the council? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And thank you for your time, and thanks for moving us up on the agenda. We certainly appreciate it. Um, you guys got the last taste of winter, I think, today, so it seemed a lot more om ominous because it was so nice uh, up in central Wisconsin that everyone was saying it was like a blizzard conditions, but it's, it wasn't that. So it was a safe and wonderful ride down. Um, I, I want to thank you on behalf of the Ho Chunk Nation for entertaining. First Amendment uh, for our intergovernmental agreements. As you know, there was a lot of work going into this prior, even before uh, uh, my term as president. And so I want to thank uh, Larry, its team, all the folks in the city, the people that work in the more subcutaneous layers of, 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 of infrastructure, all these little things that I had to learn really quickly. But um, more importantly, uh, I think we're learning today and complex the federal review process is for these applications, gaming in particular, uh, uh, much more stringent. I want folks to know here that uh, the uh, legislature is in full support of the uh, ongoing extending, extension amendments here. Not only are we doing things beyond passing resolutions, but every trip, and there are many to Washington, D.C., we do uh, make it a priority to see the decision makers and extend whatever service that we can that can help them move this application along uh, a little quicker. So uh, we, we do know that um, under the review that there are um, very nominal concerns and we're very happy to hear that usually these things can come back in in brief um, but the, the the concerns are very um, minor and and um, and they're not even something that the nation has any obligation toward so I, I I'm really excited to see um, this refresh I, I'm, I, unfortunately we're here talking about extending these we had hoped we would have, have gotten uh, an answer um, soon but um, as is uh, I think Larry's um, very He's, he's very realistic in saying within the next year. I, I think uh, um, I tend to be the forever optimist, but I think given the level of support that the city and the county, the people of um, Beloit and the state line region have given to this, um, the amount of uh, uh, experience that the, the teams have on both ends, I think we're looking for a fluid uh, approval. So um, we remain optimistic and hoping to get some business down in the state line region. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you. Are there any questions for Larry or President Greendeer? 
on the right. motion then for acceptance of the First Amendment. Thank you. Uh -huh. Second. Moved by Luke, he's second by Kelly. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? That's approved 7 to 0. And uh, with that, we'll jump back up to item 2. <coughs> A public hearing and resolution authorizing the city manager to apply for a community development block grant emergency assistance program for a Rock County shoreline stabilization project. Ms. Christensen. Um, I know you guys review CDBG all the time. This is a little bit different program. So this is the CDBG emergency assistance program. Um, these funds were made available to communities who were impacted by the floods of 2008 in June and July. Um, in the past, we did receive... 2.2 million in those disaster recovery funds. Overall, the state of Wisconsin received 24 million, which they did dole out to local governments to assist with recovery efforts. Uh, but through a combination of returned and unspent grant funds, the state of Wisconsin has 1.2 million in the Midwest Supplemental Disaster Recovery Funds available for projects. We have been invited to apply because we have received funds for this program in the past. So the types of eligible activities under this program are public infrastructure and facilities, projects that were damaged by the disaster and are critical to recovery, and mitigation activities, projects that relate to the repair, renovation, and expansion of facilities to improve the disaster resistance of building structures. And that's where our proposed project falls. Um, when we first applied, we did apply development and housing activities um, but we were denied and as a result we handled the needs um, that came up as part of the flooding through our normal loan programs Andrew's got an economic development loan program and we have a housing rehab loan program um, so that's how we handled and addressed those housing housing needs um, the projects that were funded in the past um, you know included the um, Elevating the re reconstruction and elevation of Sherland Avenue, stabilizing the shoreline of the Rock River from Public Avenue to the Rock River Generating Station, um, stabilizing the shoreline from the Riverside Park Lagoon to the Heaven Henry Avenue Bridge on the east side of the river, and along the post office property, installing a new flood wall by the post office and raising the electrical transformers for the Sherland Avenue lift station. Um, and this gives you an indication of what, you know, how much of the shoreline we covered. But, um, the current project we're talking about doing is a shoreline stabilization project on the west side of the Rock River between the Dam and Liberty Avenue. That's the Sill Green Strip. And the project is estimated to cost $319,000. Um, the citizens part city citizen participation plan and the state require a public hearing to be held to seek citizen input on this grant. Um, and city policy and the state require city council authorization authorizing staff to apply for, for those funds. Um, there is no um, housing as part of this, so there's no residential displacement, um, no direct um, negative impact on any of the residents, um, but we'll, it will we'll allow us to stabilize that last piece of shoreline um, so that if we would have flooding again in the future, we wouldn't be eroding the shoreline at all. Um, and so this is on your item for action, um, authorizing the manager to apply. Um, and this is the night where citizens, this meeting has been noticed in the paper, to give citizens an opportunity to comment on the proposed projects. Thank you. Uh, with that, I will open the public hearing on this item. If anyone wishes to speak, please approach the podium now. Second call for anyone wishing to speak on item two. And third and final call for anyone wishing to speak on item two. Seeing none, I'll close the hearing. Are there any questions or is there a motion to approve? see that uh, this is due April 3. Yep. Is this already in the oven, ready to go? I have a draft completed okay. of the entire Close. application, which I sent to the city engineer who reviewed it and said it was good to go. So once I get authorization, I'll put together you know, the resolution. There's, I need copies of the notices and stuff like that, but I have all the narrative ready to go. I mean, if you said no, obviously. I'm not surprised, was... <laughs> but I just had to ask. Thank you. Sure. Councillor DeForest. Thank you. Sorry, Julia, before right. I sit down. <laughs> um, and maybe I'm misunderstanding. So we qualify just based on the floods that we had in 2008. How long does that qualification last? Um, these monies, there were, there were a couple pots of money that the state received for the flooding. Mm -hmm. um, and they were received from HUD, and they were received in around 2009. They had... Um, I think some were in 09 and some were 10. They had a five-year window on them, and so everybody was awarded funds, 
and then there were agent cities like us that had money left because the projects came on came in under budget and so pulled all that money together and it's 1.2 million and I'm sure that it goes back to HUD so they're trying to do a quickie application to see if there's any other projects that were unfunded which we had a couple and I'm sure other cities did too that they didn't get funding for and they need this money to be spent by April of 16. Okay. So that's one of the questions in the application is, can you get this done by April of 16? Mm -hmm. um, and if awarded, we will do our best. I mean, we have DNR permitting issues and stuff like that. But that's why it lingers out there because they were, they had like about five years to spend the money. So they're on their second round of the same pot okay. of money. Okay, I was confused by that. And then were there any other projects that we considered besides this shoreline stabilization? Um, based on the categories, um, there's really nothing else that's eligible okay because they'll only let us do the public facilities and infrastructure or mitigation and really there were no public facilities that we haven't already dealt with right, right. when well, I mean, we talked about it at great length um, you know Larry and I and Mike discussed whether there were a couple other things we could do um, like were Broad Street flooded right. was there anything we could do and um, there's not a good plan for how to, you know, raise <laughs> raise up that intersection is. Right. And some and the city engineer said that's really fixed by some of the storm sewer improvements that they could do. Um, and so really there weren't any other public facilities that needed to be repaired. And really the last piece of mitigation that's left to do because we've got pretty much everything else done. This was the last priority. Um, Larry can explain it better than me why that side of the river isn't as problematic for erosion but um, we did the east side um, because that's that was the more the more important shoreline to deal with because it was eroding mm -hmm. um, this piece was the lowest priority but if there if there's money available to do it right we would like to get it done okay great thank you are there any other questions or is there a motion to approve approval Moved by Haynes, second by Hendricks. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Approved seven to zero. Item three. A presentation of the City Envision Partners rebranding program. Mr. Yonke. Good evening. I do have a PowerPoint. Are they gonna set that up for us? Have you up here in just one second. Go. All right, good evening. Um, I have my colleagues with me tonight, Shauna Elamine from the Downtown Beloit Association and Tim Dutter from the Chamber of Commerce. Um, if you recall, we had a similar presentation uh, given to council back in November. And since that time, there has been a few changes. Uh, again, this is our brand uh, definition project that we've been working on uh, since last summer, I guess. And if you take a look at kind of what our project goal was, it was to develop a unique identity for the community that is clearly distinguishable from other communities, destinations, and cities. And this first slide kind of shows you examples of how we have actually used and deployed this particular brand. This graphic has been adopted by the Vision Beloit Partners, uh, the Convention Visitors Bureau, the Downtown Beloit Association, Chamber of Commerce, and the Greater Beloit Economic Development Corporation. So all four of our boards have actually adopted to this graphic and we have been deploying it since um, uh, late last year. Uh, what is the brand brief? What are we trying to achieve? We're trying to create a cohesive brand, attract more visitors, attract and retain businesses, attract and retain residents. Some of the key characteristics, uh, Beloit is an alloy of strength, beauty and diversity all melded together in a community that works. So in the brand that we're trying to develop, we're trying to tell a story. We're trying to tell a story that Beloit has diversity, it has an interesting history, past, it has a, a, a vision and a future moving forward, and it has a lot of natural and built uh, beauty. So. We've, to, we've worked together to create this creative platform. We're trying to create this unified brand, again, which we, all four of us, have adopted thus far. Some of the characteristics include, you know, our, our beautiful community, our strong community, and, of course, our very diverse community. And as I mentioned, we've been deploying this particular package over the course of the last several months. This is an example of how the organization I work for, the Greater Beloit Economic Development Corporation, has used it in letterheads, in our annual report, 
and in business cards. Um, this is an example of the letterhead that the GBEDC has used. As well, the um, Downtown Boyd Association, I think you uh, received a copy of a, a placard that they handed out. It's got a magnet on the back so it can go in folks' um, um, refrigerators at home. I think Sean has done an outstanding job in deploying this entire graphic uh, package and if you kind of see how she's rolled it out it's a very comprehensive approach we put together a whole brand catalog and how these items are actually supposed to be used when they're used for our various campaigns and pro programs uh, another example of how the GBD or I'm sorry the downtown Boyd Association has used it for their letterhead as well as uh, their mo more recent annual awards uh, banquet. You'll notice some of us have used kind of the side graphic, some of us have not. It's not a requirement. The only thing that's kind of required throughout is the actual, if you will, the seal that has what we're calling the geometric B. Uh, another example, uh, the Chamber of Commerce's, their annual meeting or annual event that they had here a few weeks ago. And the Convention and Visitors Bureau, one of their examples of how they used it for some of their place advertising. And the last few slides here, I know you've seen these at our last presentation in November, but we have thought about how this logo, this graphic package could be deployed through basic various platforms that the city uses, be it our buses, our business cards, our fire engines, um, our rescue vehicles, our DPW vehicles, and even our water tower. So we've thought this out. Uh, we have deployed it extensively. And this last slide I wanted to leave you with before we um, go into any questions that you might have is an example of how this logo can look compared to what we've been using for 28 plus years, what we call the flying bee, which is the example that you see here in the monochrome and the blue, as opposed to the new geometric bee that is my example on my right, your left. So we think this is a rather profound, positive visual improvement. Um, uh, we're not looking for any official support resolution tonight. There is no official action tonight, but we were rather hoping that council would give us some direction on whether or not they wanted us to move forward, perhaps a motion of support. Um, the forged in um, slogan is something that has a lot of ability to be customized and changed, whether it's forged in strength, forged in diversity, or in this example, forged in fire, revitalized through innovation, kind of tying all those concepts and those themes together. So that's our presentation. I know Sean is here. She could tell you about how they've deployed it as well as Tim on how the chamber has deployed the graphics package thus far. So with that, I'd be happy to address any questions. Councillor Lubke. Thank you, Andrew. Sean did a very nice job at our DBA meeting three months ago or so for presenting. And I, I, the forged, I agreed with all that. I sat there kind of, I think I was... Uh, Naive, I thought I was colorblind and I wasn't going to say anything because I, Dave, you're just not. And she presented a lot what you said, but I saw, and I continue to see an eight there. And I, I, I just put a few notes down here. The B doesn't stand out to me. I'm this is one person talking now. I'm not talking for the other counselors, just myself. But I'm, I've got to be honest. And again, I didn't speak out at the time, Shauna, because I'm thinking, Dave, you're not artistic. You have to have somebody pick your clothes out, and when you go shopping. You. I'm that type of a guy, okay? <laughs> so I'm thinking, this is beautiful, although I had a problem with how much we paid for it. I'd rather, I'm very biased. I would rather go on to the high school and had an art class do it. It's another matter, so I won't diverge that way, although I did. Um, <laughs> but anyway, you see my biases here. Um, I, I didn't see the B, and I, I, I guess uh, it just, the answer you know, I'll present an answer. The answer is a strong B with, I love the colors. The colors obviously are better than that blue before. The colors are beautiful, especially in the bus there. But I'm not seeing Beloit. I'm not seeing the B. Okay? And that's that's just me talking. But uh, I uh, I should have spoke out more at the last meeting. That's, that's all I wanted to say on this for right now. Councillor DeForest. Thank you. Um, when it was presented to us, I was kind of in shock because um, all I saw was an eight too. And I, you know, I didn't know what to do because I don't want to micromanage. This doesn't seem like a city council decision, but I'm thinking if I see an eight, and I started talking to the rest of them afterwards, did, what did you guys see? And they said, "Oh, I saw an eight. And I'm like, "Okay, this is not good. We don't want people to look at that logo and see an eight. Um, I love 
I love almost everything else about it. I love the colors. I love how you can, um, each of the major entities can have their own color and then combine to form the United, you know, colors, multiple colors in the city logo. I love the tagline and how it's versatile, the forged and fire. I love all that stuff, but it's still an eight. I, I keep looking at it and I see an eight and I see an eight and I see an eight and I keep trying to see a B and I don't see a B. Um, the only, the other concern I had too was when we looked at the letterhead, from my perspective, it looked very outdated. Um, I know, I suspect that the design team was going for kind of this, um, I'm trying to think of what to describe, how to describe, kind of industrial, um, kind of. Can you pop that back up, please, Larry? The power for the font, for the letterhead? It just looked very unpolished to me. It looked, I, you can't see the lettering real well, but it looks like something that, you know, yeah, a typewriter, and I just felt like that's not what I want to project about Beloit, that we're kind of outdated, and we've got a typewriter-type font, and and maybe that's just me. Um, so that that's where I'm at, and I, I kind of wish that we had maybe taken the logo, and I always spend a lot of time on focus groups at the front end to get input, and I kind of wish we had taken the logo once we developed it in the design back to some of those folks and asked them, what do you think, what do you see, because... I'm suspecting a lot of them would say they see an eight, and that's what concerns me. Because this is going to be, this is going to be painted on our water towers and on our fire trucks, and you know, once we go, we're gone. And so that's that's why I'm concerned. Councillor Kincaid, uh, when this was presented to us a few months ago, I got the impression that our approval was being requested as a, as a to, opposed to a agreement uh, with what you're doing and with no input. So we we did, I, I spent a little time looking at what we had with, with the idea of improving it. And I, it appears that maybe there was a little tinkering. I, ha, I don't know if it was as a consequence of what the some of the council members may have observed a while back. I, you know, I, I saw something on the screen that uh, there were what looked like large uh, soap bubbles across the top of an envelope, and I have no idea what that would have signified. So I, I, I think there's some ambiguity here, in my, my own opinion. Sorry. Councillor Kelly. Well, from my perspective, uh, when you shrink that logo, it's almost impossible to read. And on grayscale, they're all the same. So unless you can actually read what it says around there, it doesn't know whose logo it is because, I mean, we use a lot of Grayscale logos on websites. And once you put it on Grayscale, it can all be the same logo. So it, it, it doesn't, and there's all this white space. If you shrink it, it just becomes this little nothing. I, all I see is an eight. I, I'm, I, that's, I've been seeing that eight since the beginning. If I may ask the question, um, clearly the Vision Boy partners have rolled this out. We're probably going to have to live with it for a while. Um, I'm not sensing a great deal of support here, and that's perfectly fine. I mean, if the council really doesn't want to adopt this, they certainly don't have to. The question is, does the city want to continue to live with the flying bee? Yeah. Want to start a process all on your own? Vice President Haynes. Well, that is that is the thousand dollar question, kind isn't of where it? we are today, um, yeah. And uh, I, I, you know, it, it kind of depends in my mind as to how long we want to live with the, the this logo because, you know, I spent some time looking at it and I, and I dug back and I started thinking, well, where where was it? Where were they coming from when they did this? It's an, it's clearly abstract. I see a B. I can also see the, see how they see the eight. It's kind of like if you've ever been to Taliesin, it's like the hillside, you know, it's, it's some of the mid-century abstracts. Um, and and I, I don't really, I, I don't like it, but I don't hate it. Um, uh, if, if I thought, you know, I, I know that these things are kind of transitional, as long as, it, you know, we're not living with, with it for 30 years, I guess it's probably okay. Um, I think if we do get stuck with it and we do decide to do it, uh, if we're going to do a mid-century modern, um, you know, abstract for a B, then our, our font needs to be a mid-century modern font. But that would be my, that would be my statement. Um, 
d uh, a couple of people in the community have looked at it and said, well, okay, maybe this is our, our image of the moment. And they're hoping that this is a short moment in time. Um, I don't know. That's that. that I, I think this is as much much support as you're going to find on the council tonight. Is that I will live with this if that's if if this is what's necessary to to get consistent branding within the within the uh, community. I'll, I'll jump in and, and go a step beyond that and speak in favor of this because I think somebody has to. Uh, <laughs> um, Anna's kicking me under the table, um, but uh, I guess for one thing, you know, I, I think. Whether, whether we see a B or we see an 18, everybody is going to pretty quickly figure out that this is a B, and, and you know, I, I think people are going to get the concept once it's out there, and it is already out there. Uh, and if anybody can quickly find the B in, in our current logo, I mean, it's... I think it, this is certainly no less clear. <laughs> and uh, I, I would I would argue it, it's certainly an improvement. So if if the choice is between keeping the flying bee or moving to this, I I would say the choice is pretty clear to move to this, uh, both because it's a better logo, but also because I think there's strength in unity. And with the vision partners already having adopted this, you know I think uh, it, it makes sense to to all get on the same page and. If at some point in the future there's a new branding effort, then you know let's let's have the city jump in and, and make sure that we're part of that conversation and get something that uh, that whoever's on city council at that point likes better. Uh, but uh, you know, I think it says City of Beloit, so if people are are wondering what it is, it it says that on it and the colorful. I think you know there's it it's got the energy that I think we're trying to project. Uh, and, you know, I, I've liked the way that this has been deployed by the Vision Partners. I think it's worked well in that context. Um, and, and so, you know, I would say let's let's go ahead and, and jump on board and uh, see how long this goes for. But uh, I would say let's jump on board. But there's a lot of other people that want to talk, too. So uh, back to Councillor Kincaid. I know the those who worked on it worked very hard lot of them and we saw photographs of them in the last presentation and they had their sleeves rolled up and uh, I was very impressed uh, it, it's that what we have here is something look like to me it looks like we tried too hard to be cute or different or something if 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 this if the city or this council wants to proceed in some form I would uh, you know, I think uh, that if we hired somebody else and told them that we wanted a, a clear, uh, crisp uh, um, typesetting derivative from this, we don't have to walk around it and put in uh, 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 old English letters, and we certainly wouldn't, but uh, there's certainly other ways to be compatible with this without going what I, I believe is... Uh, Virtually undecipherable. Councillor Lubke. Andrew and, and John, I don't think this is a council decision. I think it's a council opinion. This is like a, another focus group. We're giving opinions on this, and that's that's all I'm doing. But um, in retrospect, what I would honestly do in the future is look to the high school's art department, maybe offer a, a $500 savings bond for the winter, It'd be a lot less expensive than what we paid for this. And uh, I, I think we get some fantastic results. We have some very talented individuals in our schools. And um, uh, that's, again, a personal opinion. And it's just an idea for the future. Thank you. Councillor Kelly? So, so they, the focus groups and everybody that was involved in this process, I mean, I like what they came up with. I just don't like, I don't, I don't really like the execution of how they came from that idea of Forge and to the to this be you know that's what I don't so I think everybody that was involved was involved in the first part of the deal but I don't I don't hear that there's that many people who were involved when they executed the idea so as far as you know for like a, a short period of time there's a lot of things that need to be changed for a short period of time you know as far as expending money on um, trucks and cars and water towers and everything else that goes with it. I mean, if you don't, if you're not loving it, I mean, I, maybe what the idea that something, 
I'm, I'm derivative with that worked out. So it'll be a, sort of the same, but not exactly. We don't have to be exactly the same as the vision partners. Where does it say that we have to be the same as exact as everybody else? What about diversity here? <laughs> Councillor Hendricks. Uh, I guess my question is, is this set in stone? Are the only two options to move forward and use it or to just use the flying bee? Or is there opportunity to tweak a little bit? Because I think, I don't think anyone hates it, flat out hates it. I think um, just giving input, I love that it incorporates all the colors. It ties in well to the school district's logo. Mm -hmm. um, I like that you can break it up that way as well. But just little things, like I see that it's bolded on the bottom, but not on the top. So the name of the vision partner isn't as clear um, on some of them, like visit Beloit, but you can see Beloit, Wisconsin. So in my mind, I would do bold all the way, or just little things like that. Is it able to be tweaked, or is this set? Good question. Um, let me try to answer that. It might be somewhat oblique. Um, we're willing to go back to the drawing table and take the time necessary. We don't have any budget. We've invested a lot of money in this. Tweaks, probably, um, certainly. Um, could we take this notion of doing a seal with a B in the middle of it with multiple colors and maybe take it to some art students and see what we come up with? We could maybe do that. We could maybe find a graphic designer, give them that kind of that same assignment. We like this notion of a round, round with a B in the center. We like multiple colors, but that just looks too too geometric and it looks too much like a numeral eight as opposed to a B, that's another option. Again, we have we have no resources financially, you know, budgeted to do that. But yeah, could this be tweaked? Probably. I mean if that is the message that I'm hearing from council, we'll go back to the drawing board. We'll find a way to do that. I think even that hard line between that I'm going to call it an eight, just it's not. But <laughs> the hard line going down, if that were blended some type of way, it would be less of an eight. Mm -hmm. So just that's what I mean by tweak, just little things. Mm -hmm. Maybe blend the yellow to the to the red and the a light. Different font, the a mm -hmm. different font, perhaps. Little tweaks. Vice President Haynes. Uh, maybe this is for the city manager. What, what kind of expenditure, what is it going to cost us to implement? Well, uh, first of all, uh, obviously I can't answer that. Um, it would be implemented over time. We'll probably try to replace uh, some of the logos with a partial logo on like the public works vehicles. Uh, so we would just remove the logo and put the circle piece in the new logo, not replace all the lettering. The uh, mm -hmm. fire trucks <clears throat> probably be done uh, intermittently over time. The water towers, we've got one going this summer, and we have this in as an alternate right now because we didn't know whether it would ever get approved or not. And, um, uh, I, you know, we really don't want to do this unless council is comfortable with this logo. Okay. Uh, this is something, I mean, all the other boards approved their logos. So, so it really is a council decision. And we thought when we did the presentation, quite frankly, uh, the response was pretty mute. just assumed that everything was okay and so we started forward and then when we got some pushback obviously we stopped and we brought this back to you as soon as we could so I think we need to find something you're comfortable with but we had no intention of going out and spending a lot of money to erase everything that's out there and implement this overnight. So this We're would just be on a this water replaced tower in, tower. in kind. So as, right. the, as things, things are needed ready, to replace, okay, there, there so there wouldn't be any some additional expenditure. Of just place, replacing the logo, okay. but it would be done over time. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I hate to just to ask to reinvent the wheel on something like this because I don't know if it's necessarily completely necessary. I don't really, I'm not, well, I don't want to hold this process hostage. And, and, and looking at the logos, if you look at the other four, the eight, you don't see the eight as prominent as you do in ours. Uh, why don't you give us a little bit of time? Let us play with that. See if we could knock that down. Uh, several of you didn't like the font. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of the font. Uh, this was specifically requested by the consultant. In fact, I think we had to hunt this up, if I remember. I think we had to pay for it. We had to, we had to buy this font because they were so insistent that the 
of this particular font to look right. Well, well, we've got dozens of fonts. We can come up, you know, we can play around with fonts. We can do something that's a little, well, uh, a little it, more pronounced, like in the old letterhead. So that we can, that we can play the, with. The thin part of it, okay, you know, is maybe he's maybe he's thinking uh, in terms of the, you know, the because he basically he's he's trying to get with the B and some of the other things. That modern uh, 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 motif so uh, typically in a situation like that you're looking for something in the art deco or the art nouveau st style of a font maybe something like frank laid right and and in the thin lines on the top of our uh, of it are uh, pretty closely approximated but in bold it loses that effect i don't know i mean that's just well and I'm the art critic the letter you know the lettering we're using on the letterhead uh, the piece that's actually in the circle uh, was kind of added later to give it clarity as to what the logo was, what it, who it represented. And most of you captured the idea that it was intended to be contemporary. It was intended to be multicolor. was intended to attract attention uh, and, and grab people's attention. And, of course, uh, the concept of having the team, so to speak, all the local organizations use the same basic brand identity and this and a similar logo was of course to project a common brand to this the, the larger community the state etc and that's been working pretty well uh, uh, Chuck you mentioned that kind of band of color uh, uh, we didn't like that either that's why you don't see that on any of the city stuff it took up a lot of space and didn't seem to say anything uh, some of the partners have used it very effectively and so look really nice with this it's really an attention getter and that's what it was intended to be so I can't tell you that was bad it just didn't strike us as communicating what we wanted to say and it took up a lot of space so again some of the partners are using it very effectively we didn't see it city so that's why you don't see that on any of our proposals we hadn't planned on using that long band of multicolors well, I guess I'm 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 kind of rolling out of my my objections, and you know I think we've we passed on the fact that we're not super happy with the way this came about or or the with the way it looks. But I I know it, I think it'll grow on us probably. Um, the flying bee, frankly, I, I I know happen to know that it it, it it engaged a lot of consternation when it came out. People tell me to this day that they didn't like it, and they still don't like it. <laughs> so <laughs> you still don't like it. It's been 30 years. Um, so, so, but, but in reality, people are have accepted it as a symbol, and and this is going to take some time to to, to you know uh, be accepted. And and I I'm willing to accept the fact that that that's probably the case. So, Councillor DeForest. Thank you. I agree with Councillor Hendricks that I think this tweaked and I think we would be really happy with it. I mean, I don't think it would really take much to tweak it. I, just moving that center line in the middle of what looks like an eight to me over, shading it maybe some more. I mean, I, I love the colors. I love the idea, but it's still an eight to me. Um, and I, I understand we spent quite a bit of money on the font, but if it's not great, then let's not just stick with it because we spent some money on it. I mean, I, but, personally, I, I would rather have you love this logo. And I, and I don't. So I think the message I'm hearing this evening, which is perfectly fine, is let us go back to the drawing and let's tweak it a little well, bit. I don't think we need to start over. Let's go back and try to tweak it and uh, let's play with the fonts. We can do that ourselves at, at the computer and see what font seems to work well with the logo. The consultant felt that this font was perfect with the logo. I'm not sure that it, quite frankly, that it's that significant of an issue. There's a lot of different fonts that would look nice with the logo. So we'll see if we can come up with a different one. Oh. Um, okay. Councillor Lubke. In talking about tweaking, we have a, help me out, we have, we paid a firm in Oklahoma to do this, but we had a consultant besides that, or that was the consultant? Tell me. No, the, the Cubic was the consulting firm that we hired to do that. It was just one firm. Okay. We paid around thirty thirty five thousand for that? Um, the overall cost was, was more than that. I think that's okay. for the city's participation. With that in mind, can't they help us do the tweaking? If you let them know that we're not we're not totally happy. We, we, there's a lot we love, but with what's been said by other counselors and other individuals, can't they 
for the money they were paid to help us tweak to make us happy? The contract was with the Convention and Visitors Bureau and working, and again, as a team, we were very involved with this. We had many, many meetings, monthly meetings. The contract is complete. The last check has been issued. Okay. They have severed their partnership with us. I will be happy when I can see these thousands of cars that come into Boyd over the Cranston Road Bridge by Frito-Lay and the Gateway, and they see the logo there, and they can re readily see Beloit, the B in Beloit. I, I and we can, we've been seeing that now. We know that that's Beloit. But somebody coming from Illinois or Iowa or Texas is going to say, this looks like a neat area. And then, boom, they're under. I want them to see it and know that they're in Beloit, Wisconsin. And they may want to relocate here and, and live here and stuff. But they're going to spend some time on that one. Okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> And bear in mind that when we rebuild those bridges, potentially whatever we use as a graphic at that time in the next three, four years moving forward, it will be etched in stone. Bridges so. better last another 50 yeah. years. Just tell me it's not going to be right. one of these. Okay. Councillor Kelly. I just wish there was not all this circle upon circle with white space. I think that makes it hard to shrink that logo and make it legible. I mean, there's got to be another option with the logo without that, you know, those circles around it that makes it look like a stamp. I'll it try was, to take them off and uh, yeah. Yeah. maybe I thought they the wanted the yeah. maybe <clears throat> adjust the straight line there so you get that that eight out of the picture. But we'll certainly give it a try. Let us uh, let us see what we can do with it. I mean, I do like do I do have the artwork. I'm not done. Okay, my button is on still. Okay, I mean, I appreciate the fact that that. With, this, with some standards for the partners so that every time somebody new comes in they don't just decide they need something new and they start mess, you know messing with it and so there's there's some standards and some you know design guidelines and stuff I mean I think that's a good idea and I think it's I mean I think it'll help I, I think we to our knowledge we're the only partners type organization that we're aware of where you have a chamber ED Oh, downtown convention visitor bureau they're all sharing the same graphic we are rather unique in being able to be in that position councillor Kincaid uh, it's been said that the camel was designed by a committee and <laughs> I, I I fear that uh, we're um, muddling as opposed to tweaking <laughs> And if, if maybe we need to have an expert help us tweak. I don't think, I think we're done muddling. I am anyway. <laughs> <laughs> or a school class. I don't care. But, you know, I'm, no. I'm tired of this. <laughs> Vice President Haynes. One last final thing I'll leave you with is don't worry about or not because I don't think that anything you're going to bring before is going to be uni is going to be universally loved here so uh, it, it, you might accept you get to the point where we're okay, just okay with it and that'll probably be enough so what I'm hearing is we want to try to be part of the unity that's going on here but we want to make some tweaks to the city logo as it currently stands I think there's a clear communication of the nature of those tweaks and hopefully we can find somebody that can do that pro bono um what is the timeline we would need to be under if we want to get whatever the the final version is on the water tower pretty quickly uh, uh we'll, we'll work on this over the next few weeks so uh, we'll be making a decision on that probably in about a month again we put it in the specs as an alternate because we didn't have it approved yet and, and the uh, primary is the flying bee? The, uh, no, no, we didn't want to put the flying bee on it. We we have the script Beloit, similar to what you see on the website now. Okay. Uh, just the one word, Beloit, with the script lettering. And uh, we've gotten a lot of interest in that as well over the years is, is something that is a nice representation of the city. So we've got that on there as primary and this as an alternate. Well, I think this looks great on the water tower with the tweaks that would come with it. I mean, it's colorful, it's attractive, it's better than just the word Beloit, so I hope we can get something back uh, in time to put on there based on the tweaks we talked about. I think that would be great. Let's, let's see what we can do with it, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. 
Vice President Haynes. Uh, one, one, one final thing. If we're talking about the logo that's going to go on the bridge, uh, that's going to be 50 years. I would just assume we have something timeless on the bridge and that the, the, mm -hmm. script, the script is going to be something we're going to recognize forever and it's going to always look okay. Well, they won't let you put words on there. It's got to be oh. a logo, so it's got to be a graphic representation. Uh, Janesville, of course, has their tree logo that they've used for years. That's what they're using. As you know, in Madison, they have a capital the rotunda with the, with the rays out on, the top, it, right? uh, on there is the capital city, and uh, so it has to be some kind of a graphic representation. So uh, mm, okay. we'll we'll, uh, we'll let us work on this and see if we can okay. come up with that tweak that uh, that will get it done. Does that provide what you need from us, or do we need any kind of resolution? Or no, sir. I, th I think that is more than sufficient. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that says it all. Thank you. Hey, we got several good hands. Uh, hey, no, this is very. I really do appreciate it because this is what we're looking for. All right. Uh, well, thank you for your patience with us in that conversation. Uh, we'll move on to item four. A resolution authorizing the city manager to enter <coughs> into an intergovernmental agreement between Rock County and the city of Beloit regarding County Highway H, Prairie Avenue, between Hubie Parkway and Philhower Road. City Manager Arthur. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is a, I guess, a relatively new twist on a project that's been underway for some time. <clears throat> After the uh, Inman Parkway project was approved, which, as you recall, is a is a county project where the city has about a third of it, uh, Inman Parkway within the city. County Highway G, which is Prairie Avenue, is a, a, a county and state project, and they are providing 100% of the construction costs. The piece of County G. Uh, in the city of Beloit, which runs roughly from the Hubie Parkway <clears throat> up to Phil Hauer Road. And pieces of that are in the city of Beloit, and pieces of it are in the town of Beloit. The county, at its cost, to cover the reconstruction of that entire roadway, they're looking at doing a, an urban cross section, so it'll have curb and gutter, storm sewers, there'll be street trees, the uh, terraces will be finished. Uh, and most importantly, this will have street lighting on this section of roadway. Uh, the project going north of Philhauer up to Highway 11 will be a rural cross section, so it will not have curb and gutter, will not have uh, street lights. It will have it will be paved just with the paved shoulders, and the shoulders will be pedestrian bike access as well as parking space on the road. And there will be some other intersection upgrades and improvements along the way. Of course, the purpose for all of this is to have a number of these local bypass routes done before the interstate uh, uh, interchange. Uh, uh, reconstruction begins and as we all know that's going to be the largest infrastructure project uh, in the city's history and there are several of these uh, small arterial routes around that interchange that are being redone and upgraded primarily with the thought of carrying local traffic to keep the local traffic out of the construction zone and then later would be available for intermittent use if there's an accident or a road closure for some reason. So as we get through the design process, the county comes to us and says this it needs to be a jurisdictional transfer. We're building this to an urban design standard. You're getting the lighting, which we don't pay for and we don't maintain, uh, the street trees, which we don't maintain and we don't, we don't pay for. Uh, this needs to, to go through jurisdictional transfer. The uh, city didn't object. This is standard practice. We did it on Chopier Road when we converted from the rural cross-section county lettered route to a modern urban street. Uh, we went to the town. We ran into a number of issues with the town in terms of getting concurrence because parts of this are in the town of Beloit. And uh, the latest effort offered a couple of different options and alternatives from the city taking the right away, maintaining and managing it. We wanted to take care of it in any event. We want to use our maintenance crews and our horticultural operations. We want to take care of the lighting because this is one of the main entree points into the city and we want it to be as nice as all the other infrastructure upgrades in the community. And um, uh, we also offered to split the right away, which is not recommended practice today, but we were willing to do that, let the town take theirs, we'd take ours, and then we would split the cost. 
Uh, that didn't work either. As you know, there was some, the, the county got directly involved at that point. They spent a lot of time working with the town. Uh, we finally got a letter from the town with a, an awful lot of conditions related to unrelated public policy uh, initiatives that the town wanted to undertake and wanted satisfy or wanted settled to their satisfaction before they would consider the jurisdictional transfer. Uh, we're in a position to do a lot of them we couldn't do. Uh, others might be doable, but would have taken months, if not years, to negotiate and work through. So uh, I sat down with the county administrator and we worked up this agreement, which is kind of a hybrid. Uh, we will do the maintenance and take care of the roadway. Uh, we will get the uh, uh, general transportation aids for this portion of the roadway. Uh, the county will maintain. So an underlight remains a county road. Uh, and basically what we've done through the intergovernmental agreement is accomplished most of what you would do with the jurisdictional transfer. Obviously the county still has all jurisdiction. They would like to finalize this at some point. Uh, so would we. Uh, this is a loose end that needs to be cleaned up and we will try to do that. But at this particular point in time, uh, that uh, initiative would not be possible in our opinion. So we're asking you to authorize the intergovernmental agreement, which accomplishes most of the same purpose, whereby, again, the city would maintain the urban portion of the roadway. We would take care of the street lighting. There's a traffic signal there. Uh, general maintenance, which we're going to do most of anyway street sweeping, that sort of thing, and the county would retain jurisdiction until some future date when we were able to effectuate the full jurisdictional transfer. And with that, I'll try to answer any questions that anybody has. Councillor Lupke. I appreciate the letter that you and uh, President Sp uh, Spreitzer sent to the township telling them that, you know, we want to cooperate, we've tried to cooperate, and we were quite frustrated by their, by some of their reticence and um, so thank you for the strongly worded letter and tactful also but uh, I just uh, I thought we were beyond that it's it's uh, it's frustrating so did we were very frustrated by it and this was something that's mutually beneficial it wasn't like we were trying to take away anybody's land or get a business and annex them into the city <coughs> we're just trying to up upgrade this infrastructure which serves everybody you know, we just we must continue to work together and try to build on a relationship and I think it's just maybe one or two people that that fear we're trying to try do something that we're not trying to do councillor DeForest thank you I uh, just for clarity's sake so the the, the town of Belay be responsible for maintenance of their section of the road no. technically no so it'll be the no, county they no they want no nothing to do with uh, maintaining any of that infrastructure that was why the initial offer we made to go ahead and split it which again is not good practice to split a right-of-way between two jurisdictions everything from public safety p policy and enforcement and accident response to uh, controlling and maintaining it it's better if it's in a single jurisdiction but we've got others like this that are split and we would have been willing to do that but they didn't want to they didn't want to do that who will be maintaining the rural section of the reconstructed county. road? The county will. North okay. of Philhauer, once you leave Beloit city limits, that will all be county maintenance, and that will okay. remain County Highway G. Okay. All right, thank you. Councillor Kincaid. Uh, Larry, you said that most of the things that we would have attained by getting into an intergovernmental, intergovernmental agreement we will have with this agreement for now is it what, well, what's most missing of the things we would have gotten through yeah. a full jurisdictional transfer what's missing we will get now? With this what idea. aren't we getting pardon what are we not getting well the jurisdictional transfer oh okay which are we cuts both ways because ultimately the county would be responsible for reconstruction when that was 30 40 years into okay. the future other than that we would take care of all the routine we're really, in a sense, picking up the uh, uh, the township's uh, share of improvement expenses. Yes, yes. Yeah. The city would okay. take care of the full maintenance on the roadway. Okay. We had envisioned that would be necessary anyway. We were simply asking them to pay a pro rata cost for that, and okay. they were they were not interested in doing that at all. Thank you. So we would take care of it in any event. They don't have the capacity to maintain something like this. We would want this maintained to the same quality you see elsewhere in the city of Beloit where we've upgraded infrastructure. 
Yes. So under the agreement, they would have paid th by uh, 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 actually paying for out-of-pocket whatever if, it costs if, to take care of their share. If we had done the split yeah. jurisdiction. And do they have those figures of what they, what it might cost them? Or? No, no, we never okay. got that so they never. No, okay, they were, so they, we were they, a long way. That. The but last anything. effort that county tried to do was to get the town to allow the city to take the entire right-of-way and maintain it. Okay, and, and that's when we got the letter with all these conditions in it, which again were totally unrelated public policy issues, uh, some of which were not acceptable, others would have taken years to negotiate, and so there was just no way that could be done on this kind of timeline. The bids are going to be let for this in a couple of weeks. This will be starting construction probably by the 1st of June, maybe even a little before. Now we in fact, have there's some utility work going on up there now. Do we have a deadline that we must meet in order to take care of our obligations with respect to uh, the interchange and the high and the? And We're the okay with the interchange okay. and all the interstate stuff. Okay. But most of these projects to do these bypass routes are, are going to be done this year. Okay. Uh, this one will be done. The Inman County G uh, Hart Road will be completely. That'll be widened somewhat, completely resurfaced, uh, rebuilt, and that'll be done this year as well. And then, of course, the other one that we have in place here is Gateway Boulevard. That gets uh, some signalization upgrades. And we'll as we speak, uh, we may get that done next year. Thank you. Councillor Lipke. The beauty of that is it's going to stop those big trucks in a couple of years from going down Prairie by the hospital in Aldridge, and businesses will turn on that new road. So, Larry, if we uh, pass this tonight, it's an agreement between Beloit and Rock County with, and the township's out of it? Yeah, the township would not be involved in okay. it. They mm -hmm. retain, you know, the county retains full jurisdiction for the roadway, the right-of-way. It's too bad, but I, I guess we have no choice. It seemed like the best thing we could do. We don't want to lose this project. Uh, it isn't every day, uh, and obviously there was motivation here because of the interstate project, but it's not every day that the town and, and covers 100% of the cost completely rebuild this roadway to our design standard. So this is a pretty neat opportunity for the city to get a big portion of that Prairie Road fixed. We still got a piece south of this that's in the city that needs a lot of work, and that's one of the things that's on our priority list. But this is a pretty nice opportunity, so we don't want to lose it. Are there other uh, questions or comments on this item, or is there a motion to approve the intergovernmental agree. agreement? I'll make a motion. Uh, moved by Haynes, uh, second by Lukey. Uh, <laughs> um, second by Kincaid. Uh, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? This is approved 7 to 0. Item 6. Approving farm lease extension between the City of Beloit and Jason Henschler for 2001 Gateway Boulevard and uh, 3611 Clinic Road. Mr. Yonke. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Arf, do you have that uh, map for the council? To, oh. There you go. Thank you very much. Uh, council recalls these three pieces of property we purchased at the end of, uh, actually we closed in 2014, early in 2014. We refer to it commonly as the Hexter Lawn property. When we purchased these lots, we also um, received a farm lease. Uh, that lease ended at the end of 2014. We normally would have brought this to you earlier, but if you recall, at the end of uh, last year, we were still negotiating with Pratt, and in fact, we thought Pratt Industries was going to take this southern piece south of the railroad tracks. Of course, Pratt decided to go in a different location. So uh, we are here tonight asking you to renew this lease for one more year. Uh, with that, assuming that approval takes place, this lease, with, uh, along with the other leases that we currently have placed, they will all expire at the end of this year, and sometime this summer I'll be taking all those properties out to bid, and the cycle will all be now all aligned. So that's essentially my comments. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to address those. Councillor DeForest. Thank you. Where did the decision come from to add 3611 Clinic Road? It was part of the original lease. It was, okay. Yep. All right, thank you. Councillor Kincaid. So the lease expires April. The lease technically expired at the end of 2014. Oh, what's the hurry? 
<laughs> well, he wants to start. Planting. He wants to start planting probably in the next 30 days. I understand. So we normally would have taken this to council probably in December, but if you recall, in December we took a development agreement to council for half of this property for Pratt Industries. So this is the site of Blight's most famous wetlands. Yeah. <laughs> um, are there any other questions on this item? Councillor DeForest. Okay, I'm just really overtired. But you got to bid with all the other uh, land yes. contracts that we're doing yes. at the end of the year. Okay. Actually, I'll, I'll send those out to bid this summer. Okay, great. So you will get the full package with all the bids probably in November or December. Okay, great. Just want to be fair. Thank you. Uh, seeing no other questions, is there a motion to approve? Second. Moved by DeForest, second by Haynes. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? This is approved. Seven to Item seven is adjournment. Is there a motion? Moved to adjourn. Moved by Hendricks. There a second? Second. Second by DeForest. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? We are adjourned. Aye.